the pharyngeal arch arteries develop. Now pharyngeal arch arteries are basically six in number and out of those six only three persist, rest of them they retrogress. So uh, you will see here that the dorsal aorta on each side coming together in the midline forming the median vessel right and from the aortic sac that is from the truncus arteriosus and the aortic sac right and left horns there arise six arch arteries pharyngeal arch arteries starting from cranial to caudal they are numbered as one two three four five and six and this aortic sac along with the truncus arteriosus is responsible for the formation of the pulmonary trunk and the ascending aorta. Now this first and second along with the fifth arch arteries they retrogress on each side. The only persisting arteries are the third, fourth and the sixth one on both the sides and they further contribute to the formation of uh, the arch of aorta, common carotids, brachiocephalic, subclavian and the pulmonary trunk with the right and left branches. Now uh, you see here, this one is showing you two external carotid buds which attach at the cranial ends of third arch arteries thereby responsible for the formation of external carotid arteries. Now the fourth arch artery on the left side as you can see the aorta is left sided so the ascending aorta is formed from the aortic sac and then arch of aorta is formed from the fourth arch artery. In the fourth arch artery just caudal to the fourth arch artery on the left side there attaches seven cervical intersegmental artery on each side right this um, gives attachment to the seven cervical intersegmental artery that is responsible for the formation of subclavian artery so this is the arch of aorta from the fourth arch artery then uh, the subclavian artery of the left side from the seventh cervical intersegmental which is not shown here this one becomes the descending aorta along with the fused median vessel the right sided dorsal aorta retrogresses the portion of the dorsal aorta on the right and left between the third and fourth arch arteries actually retrogresses if it persists then it is known as ductus keroticus. Then the portion of the sixth arch artery distal to the attachment of the lung buds. Lung buds get attached over here. right? So the distal portion of the sixth arch artery on the right and left side they retrogress. On the right side it completely retrogresses. On the left side it forms ductus arteriosus. Fine. And the sixth arch artery forms the right and left branches of the pulmonary trunk. Now we were talking about the arch of aorta that is formed from the fourth arch artery and distal to this fourth arch artery at the level of fourth arch there is attachment seven cervical intersegmental that is responsible for the formation of subclavian artery of the left side. On the right side the fourth arch artery is forming uh, the subclavian as a whole along with the seventh cervical intersegmental which gets attacked at the same level. Now this third arch artery on both the sides forms the common carotid artery distal to the external carotid bud that is the portion which is present here is the common carotid artery of the right and left side whereas the portion which is beyond the external carotid bud on each side along with the um, dorsal vessel cranially gives rise to the internal carotid.
carotid artery. So this becomes the external carotid artery, that is the external carotid bud and rest of it becomes the internal carotid artery, whereas the third arch artery at its beginning is the common carotid artery. So that is how the brachiocephalic is formed by the right horn of the aortic sac. Here it is the arch of aorta, then the seventh cervical intersegmental forming the subclavian. Subclavian on the right side by the fourth arch artery along with the seventh cervical intersegmental. The common carotids from the third arch arteries, external carotid buds giving rise to the external carotid arteries and rest of it becomes the internal carotid artery. So that is how the adult structure is achieved. As you can see here, this one is, it is a bit twisted and torn. So this is, you see, the pulmonary trunk with the right branch and the left branch. Here you can see the lung buds and this is the ductus arteriosus. Then uh, the ascending aorta with the aortic sac, uh, sorry, the truncus arteriosus and the fourth arch artery forming the arch of aorta, descending thoracic aorta. Here the common carotids are common carotids are present, and you can see the external carotid buds giving rise to the external carotid arteries. Rest of them they form the internal carotids as such. This is the brachiocephalic and the continuation of the right subclavian. This is seven cervical intersegmental. You can see this is whole as it is continuing as the brachiocephalic artery. So this is how the pharyngeal arch arteries develop. Thank you.